Hey, Angelo asks, how does get rectangle function work for a uh, pie game? So, and then he puts an example right here, get rectangle mid top 300 comma 200. So get rectangle is a function in pie game that returns a rectangle represent, representing the surface of your, you know, your image. And the surface is basically just the layer with your image on it in the video game. So if you go to pygame.org.docs.ref surface and then you scroll down to get rectangle here, you can see the entire, um, well not the entire, but a nice brief example of what's going on with it get the rectangle area of the surface so it's a little bit confusing because maybe for some people because the rectangle is sort of just a pair of coordinates you know it's literally if i come over here i have this bouncy ball demo loaded and it just goes through the typical stuff you know don't worry about all this code for the moment um it's just basically importing the stuff that's necessary right here initializing the pygame game library setting up some variables that i'm not even going to use or talk about in this example um, initializing the screen and then right here is what matters you know this is like the game loop effectively down here but right here is the spot that is in question so what we're doing is we're taking we're using the image module to load an image that's um happens to be called intro ball dot gif in this example and your situation is going to vary unless you're of course using the same exact example I'm using but you'll punch in some valid path and file name right here and that will return you a surface of that image so instead of it any longer being like a dot GIF file somewhere on your hard drive and all that it's now that pixel color data loaded into an object variable called ball and then we can on that object we can call the method get rectangle or get rect of course and that will return us a rectangle so let's copy this part and i'm going to hit f5 to run it save and run it and there's that example but i'm just going to close that out and so that's left us in the state like that effectively put us in that program's working directory and loaded all the uh, variables and objects in that code's all loaded into memory right now, so that's handy. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we'll just type ball. And there it is, there's that surface ball, which is right here, that, that reflects this line. So we've loaded the image into ball, and we can see we got a surface back that's 111 by 111 by eight bits per pixel wide. And if we were to type ball.get rect, with no parameters, we get back a rectangle structure, basically, which is a rectangle object in Python. And this is always going to be 0, 0 up here, if you just type it like I did. And that reflects those two coordinates right there. They reflect the top left corner. If you picture that box drawn out on your screen, you know, just think of like a just a square, you know, nothing fancy. That top left corner of that square is going to be at 0, 0, and then we effectively have the width and height right here. So from 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1 um, by 1, 1, 1. So that makes sense, right? Well, it gets a little confusing because these are x, y coordinates. So I'll put an x and a y right below. Oops. There's an x, a y, and this one is a width and a height. Unless I have them backwards, but that's the way they should be right there. Okay, and I just hit Control c to go down the line. Okay, so we can see we've got the x value, we've got the y value, we've got the width value, and we've got the height value. Okay, so starting all over, if pretty much, if we have that ball and we call get rectangle again, well, it would just return us another of that same rectangle, but as per the example provided by Angelo, let's do this one right here. I'll just copy this, jump back over here, and paste that in right there. So if we type that in, it, you don't 
then we get um, 245, 200, 111, 111. So that's where it might get a little confusing to say the least is because it's like, whoa, what's, what's going on? Okay, we, we called it by the mid top. So if we had a square, of course, the mid top's going to be if you take that top line of that square or that rectangle or whatever, and then divide that line in half and put a little dot right there, a little coordinate right there, that's where mid top is, of course. So what we're basically doing is we're calling get rectangle effectively with no arguments. If you want to think of it this way, it might help. And we're getting back, almost getting back this rectangle right there. But right before it hands it back, it's going to effectively move that rectangle so that it's at that top left corners now at these x, y coordinates right here. But of course, the width and the height will never change really, unless uh, we do something to change it, you know. So that's what's going on. This stays consistent. This will always show that same image size or whatever you want to think of it as, character size, whatever. And this will effectively move it so to speak but it's not really when you move it all you're doing if you call the uh, move you can see if you type dir ball dot get rectangle and this is going to give us that returned rectangle it's going to list all of the properties attached to it the attributes attached to it so we can see there's move and move in place right so if we move it, we're effectively just changing these coordinates. So it's been a minute since I messed with Pi game, but I can, or excuse me, I can uh, go like this. Get rid of this line. Oops. I'm hitting Alt P and for previous and Alt N for next to go through that history. Or you can just move the cursor up to the line and hit Enter to get it to reprint it. Okay, so that returns that. Uh, rectangle object right and then we want to find out on that let's do a help for move Is that the way I want to do that okay let's just see what this does Moves the rectangle, so there's that. Move x, y, you can see it adjusts those x, y values. Um, wanted to find a little bit more specific. So if we go to here and we go to the Python, uh, Pi game. So if you go to the Pi game help reference and click on rectangle right here. Just ignore this for now. It kind of covers up if, like, I was going to give a link in the below the video to this right here. It's going to, like, drop you in. Let's see if it will redo it. It's going to drop you in like this, and this thing's hanging over a little bit of bad design. So just scroll back up a little bit, and you'll be able to click, see, get rectangle right there. Um, yeah, so if we, that's the surface, though, right? That's the surface that gives us that rectangle. And then over here's the documentation specifically for that rectangle, which is like a sub object basically. And then we can go right here and click on move and scroll back up a little bit. Move returns a new rectangle that is moved by the given offset. So this is an offset. So this isn't uh, precise. Um, this isn't absolute coordinates right here. These are these are deltas of how much you want to move. So that's not the one I want there. Okay, so that being said, let's do ball dot get rect, and this time we'll just save it as R. Okay, so R we can see there it is, the the standard rectangle, nothing fancy yet, and then we want to do rectangle dot move. Um, we'll just move it by one pixel each, by one pixel x and by one pixel positive y. And then we can see right there now that rectangle I'll reprint it again. Okay, that's right. I didn't do a move in place. So what it did is it returned a copy of a rectangle right there. That's another little confusing thing. So you'll need to store that copy, use the equal sign to store it over itself, or you can use move in place, which will affect this rectangle. It'll actually mutate this object, this rectangle, this pair of coordinates. Okay, now if I do R. 
then we can see it's that. And I could keep doing that. I could keep moving it in place by one, just like it was a character or a ball or something moving at an angle across the screen. And you can see there's that. And then, oh, we want to move it back one, back the direction. It just hit a wall or something. Okay, we can do that. And then you can see it's back to one, one, and so on. Okay, so now if we do ball dot get wrecked, and this time we pass it the mid top equals 300 comma 200 um, we'll save that as our and then we can see there it is 245 by 200 one, 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 one. okay so a little bit confusing right well if think about it like this we know that rectangle is 111 wide right so if we take half of 111 one, one, one divided by 2 we get 55.5 and then if we take that 300 right 300 now it's almost escaping me and that's where the middle is going to be right so if we do 111 111 minus that um i can do an underscore in python right and that will be that 55.5 but just to illustrate i'll do 55.5 Hold on, <laughs> I just practiced this and it's escaping me now that I'm trying to narrate it. That It's a super easy concept, but this is why it's so confusing. Okay, so it's 111 wide, right? And for that mid top to be there, that far over at 300, we need to go 300 minus half of 111 oh man i can't believe i can't remember this now i just did it oh okay so i'm just totally blanking on this so the middle to it's hard to visualize it without the coordinates there um hmm <laughs> i feel so dumb right now um so if it was that top left corner, if we said, hey, give us that top left corner, right? Let me do something easy and re-explain it to myself here. Maybe that will help. So we'll say, I don't remember if it's top left or left top. I wouldn't be surprised if this is wrong. Okay, R. There we go. So now that's that far left corner is up there, right? So it's just initializing the rectangle at that spot. Now, if we want the mid the mid top to be there we effectively need to shift that top left corner back by half right so that 300 300 minus 55.5 there we go that's the number i was looking for okay so now if we do the same exact thing and do get rectangle mid top and the mid top we're going to put at 244 but it's 0.5 so we'll round it up to 245 just like that right wrong that's how we got 245 sorry here there you go there's your rectangle sorry it's so confusing i'm confusing myself there's that 245 right so to sum it up you take the the spot where you want the top left corner to be and then you do the difference maybe the mid top might not be the best one to use for this example um, you may want to consider whether or not it's the best one to use in your case if it is then it probably won't mess with your head like this one is to me um, if you're having a lot of trouble with the mid top maybe just revert back to using the top left instead of the mid top but that's what's going on anyway there so we can see that if i hit um there are Okay, so it's there and it's the same thing where it's just, it's effectively instead of starting you out at zero, zero, that default upper left corner of whatever you want to think of it as, um, you're just punching in some coordinates to say, hey, instead of zero, zero, give me X, Y coordinates here. It's the same thing as getting the rectangle and then immediately changing those X, Y coordinates to be that, if that makes any sense. So if we say ball dot get wrecked just a regular old ball get wrecked and then do that and then we have the zero zero coordinates right so now i'm going to say r dot move 
and then in place. Otherwise, I could say, um, well, I'll just do this one first. Well, no, okay, here. This one's doesn't mutate. So R equals R move, and then um, 245, because it's an offset, right? But since we're at 0, 0, that offset's going to end up being just like absolute coordinates. So we're going to move it just like that. And then what do you expect here? Of course, instead of 0, 0, now it's just like as if we'd asked it to give us that. And of course, the other option is um, if you don't want to assign it to itself or a new rectangle, then you can just do an in place move and that will just mutate itself. And now if we do this, it will move it that much further. So we can see R490. And then of course, if we were to pit negatives here, then it would move it right back to where it was effectively. Okay, so the rectangle is just like a square or rectangle, a box around something like, think of it maybe a, a initially just a bounding box around your image that represents those coordinates. There's nothing magic or fancy to it. It's just a set of coordinates that happens to be glued to your object, to that surface, right? So you can move it, do whatever you want with it. It's just, you know, it's totally an arbitrary thing. You could make something called RCT instead of RECT and give it four coordinates and kind of do similar stuff with it if you wanted to. This isn't really wired into much of anything else. Other things have the option of looking at this these values here, but anyway, I hope that maybe better explains what's going on. If you're a little bit confused, don't worry about it. That's totally normal. Obviously, I'm confused by it, but the, most of the stuff in Pygame, when you work with it regular, regularly, then it just um, it comes a lot more naturally and stuff like that. But I admit that as I dig through the library and stuff and find even a lot of the simple essentials like this are just like, ah, maybe that could have been done a little bit better or whatever, you know. But the library is around 20, going on 20 years old now. So there's you can expect stuff like that, right? I mean, even languages like Python and Java and stuff like that have evolved a lot in the last 15 or 20 years or so so a few blemishes like that as far as whatever is no big deal and if it comes down to it if that's you know if you're like hey i'd rather redesign the system like this go ahead redesign that interface how you like it and then stuff one of these old-fashioned rectangles behind that interface and just manipulate that interface like that all right thanks a lot take it easy